hi everyone in today's video we will be talking about endopelvic fascia what is basically endopelvic fascia to understand that let us understand how the peritoneum is lined here so you have the peritoneum which is coming over the bladder correct a large part of the bladder is a retroperitoneal organ it goes here covers the uterus correct this is something which we call as the uv pouch then it goes down and it encompasses a part of the pouch of douglas and it comes up correct so this is your margins of the peritoneum every other structure which is located underneath this is going to have a beautiful coverage okay of this tissue this is basically connective tissue this connective tissue is holding on to these organs with one another this is also present behind the rectum and you must understand as students that in this plane here above we have already explained that there is going to be presence of a levator ani muscle this muscle is going to go here correct so whenever there is a break so if i magnify this entire anatomy for you if i take a piece of the endopelvic fascia and i just magnify it for you it is basically a lot of collagen it is a lot of smooth muscle and all of them are intertwined with each other hmm see the arrangement it is like a loose mesh okay the word mesh is very very important keep this because it is going to help you in the future okay this is how the endopelvic fascia looks like now whenever we try to describe any form of organ prolapse we always think that there is a defect in a particular site of the endopelvic fascia let's say the defect is here okay so i will just quickly draw all these defects one by one for all of you let's assume our primary defect is in this part of the fascia okay so we think that here we are going to experience anterior prolapse let's say if the defect is here posteriorly we think that oh there will be presence of a rectocele or a posterior wall prolapse actually that is not going to happen my dear friends because the vagina has levels of support along with the levator ani muscle we have already understood in one of our sessions the beautiful thickening of the peritoneum which is the utrosacral this and this pubo cervical ring the ring which surrounds this entire aspect okay is a very strong very very strong support so just keep that in mind these are your supports that is the endopelvic fascia which is going to help you okay now any surgery which we do okay so now let me just draw the organs one by one by one traditionally what are we taught okay traditionally we are taught that okay this is how you are going to have problems the bladder is going to come out the vagina is also going to come out here okay something like this that is where you have the rectum everything coming out and this is where you will have your uterus here correct so you have a large cystocele this is the cystocele you have a large rectocele and if a small bowel part is coming as well you are going to say oh there is a presence of a let me just label there is going to be presence of cystocele there is going to be presence of an enterocele and then there is going to be presence of a rectocele so what are we taught we are traditionally taught that okay you cut the vagina and you do buttressing you cut the posterior vagina and you do buttressing what is this buttressing this buttressing is actually inducing fibrosis inside this plane you want to go and introduce fibrosis in this entire region okay when you go and you want to introduce fibrosis in this region please understand one very important concept that no matter how well you try to repair the pelvic organ prolapse there is going to be another aspect of anatomy which we often forget so if i draw for you here you will have the bladder like this along with this bladder you will have the strong pubo cervical ring and then you have your rectum okay along the lateral pelvic wall my dear friends there is something called as arcus okay on both the sides the endopelvic fascia also actually extends inside that plane the endopelvic fascia not just present in one plane it is present in the entire plane so whenever even if we try to put a mesh like let's say we are putting a posterior anterior mesh 
as well as a posterior mesh and then suspending this entire anatomy we are suspending here to the sacral promontory so let's say this entire mesh is then suspended to the sacral promontory a lot of tick marks for example this is not repaired this is not repaired this is not repaired this is not repaired as a result of this no matter how hard you try to repair a pelvic organ prolapse just remember that despite the best attempts the repairs for a pelvic organ prolapse are going to be incomplete okay on top of it if you just do a vaginal repair here without mesh okay then it is very very incomplete as a result of which the gold standard in pelvic organ prolapse is currently to do a laparoscopic sacrocolpo or sacrohysteropexy okay and then anchor it to a bony prominence because only by doing this you can introduce maximum amount of fibrosis in this plane you can introduce maximum amount of fibrosis in this plane and you can introduce a lot of fibrosis here simultaneously there is another surgery for prolapse which we will discuss in a later video which is called as sacrospinous ligament fixation i will be taking session on that where we will discuss how it is good but not completely anatomical